from the morning reading and we've got quite a little montage this morning so um, it might seem like it's hopscotching around a little bit but a number of items I thought were of interest. Stocks stabbed lower Friday as the NASDAQ joined the S&P 500 and falling under the 200-day moving average. The NASDAQ dropped 1.5%, its third loss of 1% or more during the week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500 lost 1.2% and 1.1% respectively. Volume rose across the board. The NASDAQ punctured its 200-day line one day after the S&P 500 did. The NASDAQ's 50-day line turned north recently as some ugly August days fell outside the 50-day range, but any slightly positive sign in the current stock market is dwarfed by larger realities. For example, the distribution count is now at a high level, and the NASDAQ suffered cluster distribution, three distribution days in the past four sessions. Distribution involves a loss of rising volume, which is the footprint of institutional selling. Also, the new lows count continues to bulldoze over the new highs. And then the next item here, the bull market, is it already over? If you're using the 200-day average to define bull or bear market, the S&P's trend lasted only 14 days, making it one of the quicker failed rallies in history. Looking at other such failures, returns going forward were weak, particularly over the next one to three months. Crude oil has lost 10% over the past two weeks and more than 50% over the last year. In more than 30 years, it has had this bad a combination of short-term and long-term selling pressure 10 times. It rallied over the next month virtually every time with a heavily skewed reward-to-risk ratio as they were concentrated in 1986 and 2009 as oil was putting in a long-term bottom. And a little bit more on commodities here. Rising dollar pushes commodities to a 14-year low. The CRB index of 19 traded commodities falling to the lowest level since 2001. That puts it even lower than at the bottom of the 2008 financial crisis. The main reason for the commodity downturns in 2008, 2011, and again this year were upturns in the U.S. dollar index. During the past 10 years, the rolling 100-week correlation between the two indices is a minus 0.96%. That means when the dollar goes up, commodities fall 96% of the time. The most recent jump in the dollar started this October with a strong jobs report increasing odds for a December rate hike. That started the most recent commodity slide. That puts the Fed in a strange place. It wants to see some evidence of commodity price inflation, which would signal stronger global economic conditions to support a rate hike. But a rate hike strengthens the dollar, which weakens commodities even more. That's especially true with the ECB talking about more easing in December, which is weakening the euro against the dollar. Weaker dollars, Weaker commodities will also hurt foreign stocks that produce commodities like Australia and Canada, as well as several emerging markets. Falling commodities may also be tied to a weaker Chinese economy. Falling commodities may also explain why so many foreign stocks are doing worse than in the States. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 7.09 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of November the 16th, 2015. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's take a look at the morning report. All four broad market U.S. indices are slightly up, and given the uh, really sad news from Paris, from the terrorist attack, which came in at the end of the day Friday, um, obviously, you could have easily seen um, today uh, the open here be much lower. And indeed, on Sunday night, the futures initially did gap down, 
and then uh, found some base and then rallied back up. And at this point, this cut time, we are up in all four of the broad market indices. The S&P futures are up over four points, about 0.2 of a percent. Russell's up about a third of a percent. NASDAQ's right at scratch, and the Dow is just above scratch. Um, in terms of overseas action, also big inflections, initially starting out quite weak and then um, improving in a number of examples. China is now up about three quarters of a percent, though Hong Kong is down about one and three quarters percent. Japan, which had some news about back to back quarters uh, with very poor economic perform performance, is down one percent. Uh, Germany and perhaps the DAX. Uh, and the German financial market is the, the most telling as to what to expect with our own open. Um, usually a fairly tight correlation there. Germany's up about 0.4 of a percent, as is about the same for the United Kingdom. In terms of macroeconomic reports for today, there's not really anything on the U.S. There's the Empire State Manufacturing Index. That's it. Um, the bigger thing will be um, the impact of ECB President Draghi speaking. Um, that could have a play. And then, of course, um, continued fallout, um, plus or minus, with respect to the recent terrorist attacks in Paris. In terms of Tuesday, um, a bit more crowded stage across the globe. In the United States, you have mortgage delinquencies, some housing data. And that's about it. Oh, we do have uh, capacity utilization and industrial production and core CPI. Core CPI is a big deal, and that will come out before the market opens. So we do have a fairly interesting slate of macroeconomic reports for tomorrow. In terms of current volatility conditions, obviously we've been seeing a bit of a spike in volatility. You see the um, short-term VIX up over at 20 now. SKU almost a 140. Um, that certainly elevates the chance for continued um, significant moves to the downside. We did see that probability followed through on Thursday with a two standard deviation move put in on the S&P. In terms of Friday, we had three of the four indices that had standard deviation or greater moves. The Russell was actually um, the calmest on Friday, but you had the NASDAQ down two standard deviations, S&P and the Dow down one standard deviation moves. In terms of, let's take a quick look at the charts. Uh, ugly, ugly day, but um, pretty interesting. And, you know, we always love to hear um, comments uh, from the folks who say that the market is random. It's anything but random. You look at this action on Friday. Where did it stop? It stopped right at the 38 Fib extension, which also nicely lined up in the same general area as the uh, FOMC wick of two months ago from 917. That swing high and um, some of this recent action that came through as it was resistance initially here and then became support. Well, that became support again, at least for Friday. Now we'll have to see, um, you know, at what point does this big move and, you know, notice here three large, big body red candles here, quite ominous. Um, you know, where does this recent move find support? That's the number one question out there for everybody right now, I'm sure. Well, it could find support here, and this could become the rallying point. I suspect that we're going to come down here to this 2000, 1994, remember, on the SPX contract. Um, that's the 50% FIB extension. There's a lot more heavy um, support in that area. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a small bounce, relief bounce, and then a rollover. Um, into this area. That's one theory. It could just bounce and just take off back to the upside from here as well. That certainly is a possibility. I have to believe, though, that given um, just how ugly this action was, that any kind of rally will largely be met with the entry of new short sellers, people loading up on spider puts and so forth, and um, that will likely dampen any attempt 
of a rally unless the bulls really get some energy and momentum behind them. So be very, very suspect of um, any kind of rally early in this week and um, watch that momentum and energy and how much breadth participation is behind that. Um, if you see things starting to um, show evidence of, um, you know, lacking much breadth, um, you might want to consider that, that it's just a relief bounce and we're likely to take another leg down. In terms of the other indices, so we'll go to the Dow next. It's the one that's most similar to the S&P. And they often do trade, much like Cousins, um, often matching the action. Um, also, basically came to a stop at the exact same relative place that the S&P did. In terms of the NASDAQ, NASDAQ, of course, was particularly ugly on Friday. You see the gap here on the NDX index and then um, filled. Well, remember this gap from the earnings from Google and Amazon that jumped this? Well, guess where it stopped? Again, uh, not so random. But we'll have to see where this comes. Is that just a temporary support line or does this continue to roll down? In terms of the Russell, now the Russell did hold up better, but remember it had gone far less. I mean, in relative terms, if it had moved from this revisit, and actually remember it undercut the August low, if it had gone to the same place in relative terms as the SPX, it would have been up in here and it never went anywhere near that far. In fact, it basically stalled at its former FOMC wick. This action here, though smaller in its pullback, um, is you know putting itself in a relatively still weaker place than the other indices who are right now basically you know up in this area at this former resistance turned support zone. So this is still relatively weaker and, and uh, not a good sign for the bulls when you, where you look for growth, Russell, small cap, and NASDAQ, you know, are um, so much more relatively weak than the um, kind of large cap Dow or even S&P 100 type of stocks. In terms of the daily report, there were some changes here, some important changes. The market trend intermediate term phase opinion has now gone to phase five. The end short term break of diagonal horizontal support is the kind of the, the short um, description of what phase five means. But um, suffice it to say, it's not as good as being in a bull flag. Uh, this is no longer looking like a bull flag. We have broken through important support zones in recent days, and um, at least in the short to intermediate terms, this is a breakdown. IBD status, very importantly, has also changed, and this has now gone to con to, uh, from confirmed uptrend to an uptrend under pressure. I mentioned in the morning reading that we had had um, I think I mentioned it. But anyhow, bottom line is we've had nine confirmed uptrend signals in 2015, and all nine of those signals have failed um, at this point. The last signal lasted 30 trading days to tie a springtime run. So far, no confirmed uptrend signal in 2015 has amounted to any significant bullish breakthrough before rolling back over and breaking down. Normally, this system produces just a handful of signals in a year, and a very noisy and constant failure is a reflection of a range-bound market exhibiting potential topping action. Much like other oscillator systems, these indicators can perform poorly in sideways conditions. Intermediate term trending action has been virtually non-existent for 13 months now, following a period of several years in which an intermediate term bullish action was highly consistent. So um, this uh, IBD status going to uptrend under pressure. Accumulation distribution score on the S&P chart is a C, and that's a degrade from where it was at the end of last week, and the NASDAQ is at a C minus. The GMI index also lost um, ground, going to a 2 out of 6, and that buy signal, which has been in place since 1019, remains on the very precipice and could very well turn into a sell signal on Monday. You'll recall that that author remained in cash during this entire recent rally, um, was not happy with um, the overall um, system 
um, settings and um, and has been remaining in cash during that entire phase. We've been talking about the primary market condition has remained in a neutral bear. So those longer term settings were bearish despite the fact that short to intermediate term had turned quite bullish in that 250 point um, odd run on the SPX. The stock charts decision point scoreboards also um, has um, seen mixed signals during this most recent action both up and now down you did have up through um, the end of last week was short to intermediate term were all turned up but the long term was still mostly in down arrows with the most recent action uh, we've seen the short term revert back to down so we're left in this very 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 scrambled mixed time frame set of signals where you have short term down intermediate term up long term down that is not a great place to be a investor um, this is a very very choppy market right now and until and if you put all this consensus together on these mechanical signals until we break out of this transition zone and one of these time frames aligns with the other and we get all three time frames short intermediate and long term stacked either bullish or bearish will likely remain very very choppy in terms of the intermediate term market posture, it is now bearish, but still retains an upslope sentiment. Indeed, you see all four indices down below 80 and slanted down. Uh, and that signal there would call for no new short term or intermediate term bullish trades. Uh, you would continue to maintain your existing positions um, while certainly managing those positions, but um, that signal would tell you to not initiate any new positions until um, this intermediate term market posture finds a term. In terms of position sizing opinions, you see changes here as well. The long side portfolio exposure up to 50%, so a reduction in position sizing as well. If you are an aggressive trader and you still initiate new bullish positions in the current marketplace, at the very least, consider a reduction in your position size. Uh, the active trader system is also called for a reduction to 50 to 75% position size so a couple warnings there the hedge warning status also has changed it has gone from a zero plus to a level one which is what we call the yellow light or hitting the caution um, so think of the car in front of you as tapping the brakes and um, thinking about um, whether they're going to go through that intersection or not it is um, increased and elevated risk now, increasing risk does not mean that we're predicting a significant down move or a degree of down move, but it does say that the market has um, conditions present which increase the level of risk that is present to your positions. And as such, there's a number of things that you might want to consider as uh, important to um, your position and how you might handle those going forward. Uh, when you go and you, you go from a level zero to a level one, some of the things that you might consider is to stop all new intermediate and long-term bullish trades. Review and tighten up stops. Consider taking off partial profitable positions, such as a 30% of a position if you're up 30% or more. So take some profits, but um, consider taking partial profits don't close the entire thing this is level one this is not level two or level three reduce position size on new short-term bullish swing trades or consider entering half and entering the second half on a pullback with the same stop consider selling covered calls on some of your um, stock positions and then also consider portfolio covered calls over the entire portfolio you might want to buy some protective puts for stocks you own. That may be one of the trickier ones. So often, right when we come into these um, uh, short-term support areas, and remember, we came into that area that we looked at on the chart where we were at the 38 FIB extension. We were at the um, previous uh, resistance turn support zone on the SPX. Well, we could very well see a bounce here, and, and you're buying puts at this point 
could seem to be stepping in at just the wrong time, especially if the bulls do dominate. So if you do use protective puts, use relatively small stops, and if you find that there is truly momentum in a, in a, um, a bottom has not just uh, indicated itself but confirmed itself, you might want to exit those protective puts fairly quickly. Um, whereas, you know, taking bear call spreads off of um, the index, especially the weakest index, or setting up volatility bomb um, put calendars, you know, those things can be more forgiving. Uh, the least forgiving strategy that you might want to consider as you go to level one on the risk level is that um, buying of protective puts. Remember, they're more expensive already and um, they can get really eaten up if this market were to turn around. But those, those are a number of suggestions of things that you can do when you see this increase in risk level into the market. Um, the other thing I would suggest that you do is if you own a lot of um, core puts, um, you um, review those positions and you consider are you truly prepared in your portfolio to take ownership of those stocks um, should those puts start to see themselves getting run over in mass so also an important thing take a look at your portfolio your positions um, and just how much exposure do you have with those either naked puts or those put spreads that are used for core portfolio in more normal bull markets in terms of the individual signals you can see under the volatility base there's a host of new warnings market and decline sharp increase warning have flagged uh, VIX futures are up over 18 so that's a warning our distribution day count we referenced this in the morning reading um, is also very high the Nasdaq's actually had a dreaded cluster with three of the last four days being a distribution day S&P has gone up uh, not just to five but over five now and that and certainly was part of what triggered that IBD status change from confirmed uptrend to uptrend under pressure VIX phase is increasing the skew it's almost a 140 and uh, is roughly a um, 12 to 14 percent probability of a two standard deviation move in the next 30 days and remember while that number might seem low as a probability that's more than seven times normal in terms of uh, the current week's expected move, this is also quite elevated and is now in the upper 40s, uh, where that was closer to uh, 28, 29, not so long ago. Um, in terms of our new highs, new lows, Friday had a very ugly day, only 32 new highs versus uh, almost 600 new lows and anything over 300 is a warning sign for us in terms of the key intermarket risk aversion indicators you have two that are risk off but a third that is in danger of rolling over to a risk off status so quite a bit of um, increasing weakness being indicated there in terms of our special opinions we have a number of changes here option income strategies the VIX is outside the acceptable window for novice traders. Aggressive traders should consider reduced position size and strategies that will account for larger than normal delta and vega moves. Be careful, not just in the initiation of your option income strategy, but that it's ready for the kind of um, likely changes we have in this kind of market posture. In terms of covered call strategies, we also have some changes here. Still cautiously bullish but only borderline acceptable to initiate new positions for novice traders. Uh, consider one-to-one -one ratios of out of the money and in the money. Might even want to go a little bit more than, um, you know, more than one out of the money for every, um, excuse me, more than one in the money than one out of the money strikes if you have a large position. Be more defensive than you would have been, say, three or four trading days ago. If you are also um, uh, doing a mix of positions, you might want to back off of some of those higher beta. We still have this as a one-to-one -one ratio between high beta and lower beta positions, but consider pushing that beta ratio to um, two lower beta positions for every one higher beta position. Start to uh, reel 
your exposure back on higher beta. Initiate positions while maintaining elevated defensive posture until the market begins to establish a stronger bullish environment, including resolution of the current bearish intermediate market posture and uptrend under pressure status. Also consider legging into cover calls of both conservative and more aggressive setups through well out of the money put selling. You can sell those puts even better, define the risk by selling a put spread. If you take assignment, then roll that into your covered call strategy. Put selling also cautiously bullish, but borderline acceptable for new core put portfolio positions, especially for novice traders. Initiate positions while maintaining an elevated defensive posture until the market begins to establish a stronger environment, much as with the covered call. Consider reduced position size, well out of the money puts on both conservative and aggressive setups. Strongly consider defined risk positions, spread those things out, and then also consider spreading them out across expiration dates and strikes. Uh, become more defensive as these risk conditions start to elevate. In terms of sector-specific market postures, um, with the Friday close, as you would well expect, things have gotten considerably uglier, short to intermediate, and now into the long term, uh, pretty much turning into a sea of red. In terms of sector-specific, you do see that materials actually had a positive day, but everything else was red. But also note now, the five-day and even into the one-month and into the three-month, we're starting to see a lot more red than green. So um, that should be telling you something about the current market conditions. Okay, I think that's probably enough for today. Um, as always, if you find that what you're getting here is helpful to your trading, uh, we greatly appreciate your knowledge that, of that. Obviously, we do this for free, but we take as in, in effect pay um, your acknowledgement, and we can see that in a number of ways. You can like us on YouTube, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, and join the well over 100 people who, just in the short time that we've been doing this, have subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can retweet us to your Twitter followers, to your stock Twit followers, and other support measures. Um, also, if you have direct commentary, you can send that support at falconglobaltraders.com. We do have a number of special opportunities available. I'm just going to leave this here for a moment. You can pause and um, go to the various links to get more information. Um, we've been relatively long today, so I don't want to take any more time, but there are a number of special opportunities that are currently available. And this one, um, we're, we're starting to get a list together of people who would be interested in the Cover Call course for 2016. Again, more information will be available later. Just send me an email to tell me that you are interested in more details. Disclaimers, as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review. And we'll see you back here tomorrow morning before the market opens with the market, with the market preview from Falcon Global. Good trading.